Hi, I'm Solana Booth from Advocates of Sacred, and I want to share some stories with you, some anafadut, some ancestral telling, some ancestral truths with you. And there's a lot of reasons why. I know it's spring, and I know we've been dealing with COVID, and now vaccinations, and quarantines, and there's been a lot of grief. And there's been a lot of compounded crisis and compounded traumas that have been settling in to our families and our homes and our communities. Some stories I want to share with you are hopefully going to provide some insight, some peace, or perhaps promote curiosity in you, for you, in your families, in your community to create your solutions. Um, the solution and the conflict are not related. They're completely separate. Just as the COVID virus and us are completely separate. However, the traumas that are induced and the compounded effects of those harms are related. And I'm not gonna go too much into generational trauma right now. I just wanna tell the story. The story is once again a Genesis story, a creation story, um, because we deserve it, because we deserve to look at our Genesis. We deserve to look at our creations. We, you know, our ancestors, no matter what, what color, skin, what creed, what um, heritage they came from, they have their genesis, they have their creations. They, they knew the stars in a certain way. They walked on Mother Earth a certain way. They shared stories with the young ones. And, and there was just all these special relationships. And so here's a creation story that talks about Sky Woman, that talks about Mother Earth. Um, one reminder about this creation story is that, uh, once again, this is a Mohawk creation story. So this Mohawk creation story might not be the same as like a Coast Salishan um, creation story or Northwest Coastal Raven creation story or Plains um, creation stories. And, and we'll, we'll share a few creation stories today. And so this story is from a time before computers, before cell phones, before internet, before books, before uh, DSM diagnoses. So before mental health um, crisis, before institutions, before prisons, um, before police, before a lot of things. So this story is very special because it's actually pre-human. This is a Genesis story of the Mohawk. And so long, long ago, there is this woman and she went by the name that meant flower, that meant sacred flower. So when this woman was in your presence, you got an essence of sweetness, you got a strength of medicine, you, you know, just like flowers do, like what they do for us. And so that's what her name meant. Um, <clears throat> she later went to go marry uh, the Sky Chief. And the Sky Chief and her um, began to consolidate their family, and pretty soon she was pregnant. And when she was pregnant, um, you see their house and their lodge up in the sky was, was right next to this big tree. This big tree they called the tree of life. And because of the tree of life, uh, because of the shade it provided them, because of the strength it provided them, because of the roots um, that were great medicine, um, it nourished them. It nourished them in so many ways. Uh, they were able to harvest the leaves for tea when they weren't feeling well or when they wanted to feel more connected to each other. Uh, when she wanted to partner more with her baby in her tummy, um, they would make tea. And just like today, 
which is really interesting. Just like today, um, Sky Woman had cravings, like pregnant people do today. She had cravings, and she so badly wanted some root tea from the roots of this tree, from the roots of this, the tree of life. She wanted some root tea. And that meant that her husband had to go and dig and dig and dig and dig and find the roots and boil it and process it and prepare it for her to drink. And this wasn't, it wasn't odd. It wasn't odd to listen to the pregnant person. It wasn't odd to kind of follow and have discernment around what they wanted and what they craved. You see, because back then, um, pregnant people were in such partnership with their baby in their tummy, in such partnership with their creator, with their maker, that um, they were considered sacred. They were considered a sacred being. Um, pregnant people were treated very, very special. They were honored, they were listened to, and, and again, um, so here's Sky Chief, and he's digging, and he's digging, and he's digging, and he finally finds these roots, but as he was finding the roots of this um, tree of life, he noticed that now there was a hole in the ground. And it wasn't like any other hole, like it wasn't even close or resembled any other digging of roots or digging of medicines. This hole actually looked like it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going. Um, they had never seen that before. They had never witnessed any kind of hole that looked like it went to another world, another world that, that they were unfamiliar with, another world almost as if digging up those roots um, gave them that opportunity to see into another world. And so he prepared the tea, and it was so good that Sky Woman wanted more and more and more. But she, she had discernment. And she also didn't want to stress him out, so she decided to find some roots of herself. She wanted to see what he saw. She wanted to see that other world. Now, pregnant people back then, just as now, are a little bit, um, you know, our balance isn't so good. And, and so as she was digging, she kind of slipped. She slipped through the hole into the next world. She slipped through the hole into the next world, and she was falling. And it probably had been a minute or two because she was able to have all these thoughts racing through her mind. She had fear. She never had fear before. She had anxiety. She never had anxiety. She, she had a, a feeling of like loss or grief and then acceptance and truth. And she had all these mixed emotions that she had never felt before in her whole life. She'd never seen people feel those things. Uh, <clears throat> so she's falling, falling, falling to this other world uh, from where she's from where she's from. And, and she just kept replaying that thought, replaying that, that action of, I just wanted tea. I just wanted some roots. I just wanted to make my own tea, and I wanted to see the other world. And you see, pregnant people are so powerful. Pregnant people are so powerful that sometimes they get what they want. Sometimes they get exactly what they want, not realizing, not realizing the discernment that you would have to employ, not realizing that being a pregnant person, you could feel things that you've never felt ever before. Being a pregnant person, you could, you'll fear, uh, fear things that you've never feared before. You have anxieties that you've never felt before that you've never seen other people feel. And so there is similarities between pregnant people then and now. However, she was falling, 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 and you see that other world that she was falling towards, there was wingeds and there was swimmers. And so the wingeds, they gathered, they. They saw, they heard, they felt something breaking the air. They felt something um, disrupting the air that they're flying in. So they decided to try to get together and try to carry and try to hold. And, and they, sure enough, the herons, the swans, the eagles, they all kind of tried to put their feathers together and support her falling. They could tell that this being was precious. They can tell this being carried life. You know, they, they, they could feel that. They could sense that. It wasn't just something falling. It was some being, some being falling. So they, they gathered together and they tried, they tried to help and then quickly, like they're all communicating to each other. So they, they reached out to the swimmers down below in the water and they, they let them know like, hey, like we're getting closer, we're getting closer to the water. We can't be in the water. We're wingeds. We, we can't be down there like that. So Turtle rose 
to the surface, turtle rose to the surface and said, um, they can land on my back. I'll support her on my back. And, and so again, um, <clears throat> that's why sometimes today you'll hear people uh, reference Turtle Island. Again, this is a Genesis story. And so Turtle rose to the surface and the wingeds were allowing her to rest there. The wingeds allowed the sun being to rest there. And as she woke up, she, she no longer had the fears or anxiety. Now she had a little bit of worry and concern. You see, she couldn't, she couldn't even look up and see her sky world. She, couldn't e she looked up and she couldn't see it. She looked up and she couldn't see the tree of life that she fell from. She looked up and all she could see was sky. Just like when we go outside and we see sky, that's what she saw. So she couldn't see her partner, she couldn't see family, she couldn't see anything. But she could feel it in her heart, she can feel it. And she quickly knew right away as she was laying on turtle, as she was coming back to, uh, she quickly knew what she needed. She knew what she needed. Um, so right away the swimmers start coming to the surface of turtles back and they start asking like, what can we do? How can we help? Like, what do you need? You know, and right away um, they all felt and they all saw that she had this baby in her tummy, that she had this being in her tummy. And so now they're all excited. Now they're all, you know, wondering, wow, this some being has this creation in their tummy and, and they're asking us to help them. Like everyone could feel the importance. Everyone knew how special this moment was. And so right away she asked um, otter and beaver and muskrat and, and the different swimmers to go deep, 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 deep down under that water to bring earth because she remembered the tree of life. She remembered what it felt like to dig for roots. She remembered how the tree of life nourished her body and the medicine that trees had. And she can tell right away, like looking around, that there's no trees. She can tell and feel that all she saw was water and water and water. So there were swimmers and wingeds. She knew that she needed some earth. She knew that what's above is below. She knew that she fell down from sky world to water. She knew that, that if she focused on beaver or otter or muskrat or any of the swimmers to dig, 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 dig deep down as far as they can go to bring up earth, that it would happen. You see, pregnant people are very special. Pregnant people know how to create. And so, boom, everyone starts diving, 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 diving down. And unfortunately, some of them didn't come back up. Uh, it was such a long way down. It was so far. It was so deep. And none of them had ever done that before. Um, however, after three and a half days of diving and digging and diving and digging, Muskrat came back up to the top of the turtle shell. And his little paws was earth. And his little paws was dirt. And his little paws was life. And so she knew exactly what to do. She knew exactly the song to sing. She knew exactly that plant relative song, that tree of life song. So she decided to bring it right here on top of that turtle shell, right here with that dirt, right here with that mud, right here before muskrat and, and witnessing um, all the swimmers witnessing that song. She danced and sang that song three times around going counterclockwise. She danced and sang that song three times around counterclockwise like that. And right before everyone's eyes, earth started to grow. That mud multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. And pretty soon, the turtle's back wasn't there anymore. Pretty soon it was earth as we know it. Pretty soon it was mother earth as we know it. Like the land that we walk on outside was right there. Pretty soon she was walking on the land with her baby in her tummy. Pretty soon she was reorienting plants and reorienting trees of life and sharing those stories of how she fell and sharing those stories of of how important roots are and sharing those stories of what roots made her feel like to the plants, to the trees that were emerging from what we call Mother Earth, from what she knew as Turtle Island back then. Sharing those stories and sharing those stories, pretty soon it was time to deliver. Pretty soon she went into labor and she began to birth her baby, her creation, the some being began to birth this creation and out she birthed a baby girl. 
And this baby girl was so special, you see. This baby girl had all the knowledge of the sky world. Her dad was a sky chief. Her mom was sky woman. She had all that knowledge. Remember how when Sky Woman first met Sky Chief, he oriented her to Sky Chief, to the Sky World. He oriented her to the Tree of Life. Now this baby girl had everything. This baby girl had all of that. And because she was in her mom's tummy during the fall, because she was in her mom's tummy at the beginning of Turtle Island, at the beginning of Mother Earth, as we know it, she had all that knowledge. She had understandings that some of us will never be able to see or comprehend. But this baby had all of those things, all, all the creations, all the stories behind the roots and the stories behind the trees of life. She had all these relationships. She was so, so precious, so precious, so precious. Until one day, she was minding her own business just as some of us do and some of us don't, minding her own business. And her mom advised her not to go west. For some reason, her mom said, don't go that way where the sun sets. I need you to stay where the sun rises. That was, that was just a request. That was just an intuitive feeling that the mother knew to share with her daughter. That was just something that she knew um, she needs to advise her. So every day, she only stayed where the sun came up. Every day she stayed where the sun rose until she got really curious, until something in her heart, in her mind, in her body led her west. And she kept going. And in her heart and her mind and even her emotions, she could feel her mom saying, don't go west, don't go west. She can feel that. And she still kept going west. She still kept going west. And, and the west had the west wind and the west wind was a little bit different. The west wind had, had a lot of, um, <clears throat> caused some erosion and caused some you know, damage to certain trees and was a little bit rough at times. That west wind caused, caused disruption to what was on the east seemed to be more balance, more calmness, more, um, more fragile areas the west was a lot different the west had a lot more disruptions to the calm the west had a lot more stronger winds which provoked stronger emotions which provoked a calmness to the water but a more agile um, atmosphere above you see the west was much different and the west wind was so strong that as the young girl was walking that way she got picked up in that wind. She got picked up in that wind. You see, it was hard for her to go unnoticed. It was hard because her mother was Sky Woman and her father was Sky Chief. Everything, every being, every, every four-legged, every swimmer, every, um, every winged, they noticed her. They could feel her coming. And that wind felt her coming. It's almost like that wind was drawing her near, like, like, like when you inhale, you could, you could bring things into your mouth when you inhale. Right, you could, so that's what it felt like was happening to her as she was going closer and closer into the west wind. She got so close that it picked her up, that west wind picked her up and swung her around to where in her mind, in her eyes, in her earring, in her hearing, in her space, she couldn't feel, she couldn't hear, she couldn't, nothing. She was just picked up in that wind. It, it's almost like she lost track of time. It's almost like she, she forgot who she was in that second or a minute or half an hour. Who knows how long she was picked up in that wind. However, when she landed, she landed with two arrows on her tummy, with two arrows kind of crossing themselves in her tummy. When she landed, she quickly realized that she had gotten married to the west wind. When she landed, she quickly realized that she was impregnated with twins from the west wind. When she landed, she quickly realized that everything was going to change everything was going to change. She knew that she would have to tell her mother, Sky Woman. She knew that, that her children were going to be something very special. She knew that she just, she could feel all these things, all these knowings, not just from being pregnant, but she could feel West Wind's genesis. She can feel the creation of the West Wind. She felt all of that in her tummy. 
along with her own Genesis, along with the Sky Woman and Sky Chief and, and Tree of Life Genesis and Turtle Island Genesis. She could feel all these things in her now, double, double. So here she was impregnated. Here she was feeling all these things and, and being loyal and still walking Turtle Island and, and still receiving information to the roots and still providing information to the trees of life and still acknowledging these plants that are still coming. You see, this, this was a transitioning time for Turtle Island, a transitioning time for her marrying the West Wind, a transitioning time for Sky Woman, still adapting and now has a pregnant daughter with twins still adapting so much transition so many creations are going on right now all of a sudden so when it's time to deliver this young woman um, she births the first one naturally or normally or vaginally she births that first one regular everything seemed okay and the second one the second one you see the second baby did something way different and it was no different than how they behaved in utero. It was no different. Like, so when the twins were in her tummy, um, they would have conflicts with each other. Like, they would, they would like fight over the space in her tummy. They would, you know, fight over the nourishment that she was providing them from her body. They would, they would have all these prayers and dreams and plans and wishes that were way contrast to each other. It was as if they came from two different worlds themselves. It was as if the twins were different, like completely different. Like if they were colors, they'd be black and white. If, if they were um, math, they would be positive and negative. They, they were so different. They were so different that the first one came out normally. You know, she birthed the first one normally. The second one decided to be birthed and found his way out of her armpit, killing her. So he found his way out of her armpit, killing her, and there she laid. There she laid, and the first one was mad at him for coming out of a different part of her body that took her life, that took their mom away. And there she laid, and out of her armpit, out of that birthing, rose um, the squash and the beans and the, the three sisters. And then out of her heart came tobacco, you see, and she was just laying there. She was, she was going back into Turtle Island. Something that happened that they were just in amazement when Sky Woman came to mourn the loss of her daughter, she began to grow. So not only were the three sisters born out of her armpit, um, tobacco rose from her heart. It's like her body was expanding across Turtle Island. It's like her body was, was growing larger and larger across Turtle Island, kind of stretching Turtle Island. Um, out of her feet came the strawberries. Out of her feet came the strawberries, which look like our hearts, which resemble a human heart, right? Um, so as the first brother was upset with the second brother, they were also humbled and they were also thankful that because of mom's death, now we have all this food. Now we have even more nourishment. Now we can sustain even longer. So Sky Woman, was faced with so many worries and concerns, a little bit different than the initial worries and concerns that started with the first baby. Now she's raising her grandsons, her twin grandsons, and her daughter is gone. However, her daughter is not all the way gone. Her daughter continues to provide us nourishment and medicine and now covers the entire Turtle Island, and so we call her Mother Earth. So her daughter became Mother Earth. Sky Woman now has to raise these two twin boys that are so different. These two twin boys, one that killed her daughter and now provides more nourishment to everyone. And these two twin boys, they have so many jobs to do. Being the grandchildren of Sky Woman and Sky Chief and being the sons of Mother Earth, they have so many jobs to do. You see, because now there's a lot more Turtle Island. There's a bigger Mother Earth. It's not just water. It's not just a smaller space. Now they must create the animals, different kinds of four-legged crawlers, different kinds of um, times of the day and night. They're negotiating all these things, and they're still not getting along. 
they're still not getting along. Because you see, the first son, who, the good boy, who is birthed normally, he wants it to be light all the time so everyone can see. And the second one, he wants it to be dark. He loves dark. He doesn't want people to see. He doesn't want, when they create the humans, he wants them to be in the dark. He wants them to, to not see the colors of the strawberries. He wants them to not know what time it is. He wants them to, to live in the dark. That's important to him. And the first one, he wants them to live in the light. So they come up with all these competitions, all these, these games, and, and whoever wins the game gets to pick. And so they created lacrosse, well, what we call lacrosse. They created different um, hand games, and each game that the first one won chose the rule of day and night, chose the rule of um, which animals are gonna be swimmers and which animals are gonna live in the night, and so on and so forth. Um, then the second boy who preferred the darkness um, also preferred more chaotic uh, weather, preferred more stronger winds, more colder winters, more um, just more, more disruption to what the humans were having a trickier time adapting to. You see, when the first humans were coming, as they were creating them, they noticed right away that the humans are, they struggle and they have a trickier time when it's really cold. <clears throat> they have a trickier time when, when the winds are stronger. They have a trickier time in the water when there's bigger waves. Like, so, so they were noticing right away how these human beings, how they are adapting to, to their design. To, their, to Mother Earth's design, to Mother Earth's partnership with Sky World, to Mother Earth's partnership with, with the humans. And so right away, they're figuring out that um, throughout the creations of the people and the humans and the family systems and the wingeds and the mammals and the four-leggeds and the swimmers and the crawlers, they're figuring out that they need both, that they need both. And that was really hard to accept. You see, the brothers would much rather say that they don't need each other. They would much rather admit that, um, that it needs to be one way or the other. And so the Mohawk creation story, the genesis of the Mohawk people, of how we came to be who we are through their relationship, through their light and dark, through their death and life, through their fighting and their bickering, um, that's one of the, the main reasons that we need each other. That's one of the main reasons that, um, that our Genesis stories are so important. That with this Mohawk creation story, that we can honor both light and dark. That perhaps human beings right now through COVID and the vaccination and the compounded crisis, that we, we do need to see through this darkness. That we do need to find each other in this dark times, that we do need to acknowledge the inclement weather <laughs> patterns, that we do need to be more humbled by the root medicines, that we do need to sought after more outside relatives, more trees of life, more teachers, more remembers that are outside in Mother Earth's natural space, that if we bring ourselves away from away from the city, away from the streetlights, away from electricity, away from internet, um, that we might be able to relate in a different way. Relate in a different way that provides us that insight, that provides us those solutions. Uh, at least be able to relate to ourselves. At least be able to relate to our highest self. And that is all.